What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now in today's video, I have my Skag V-Rad 2 with the Kawasaki FX1000 EFI, and I wanted to go ahead and do an oil change on it. It just crossed over the 300 hour mark, so it is due for its next oil change. So I wanted to bring you guys along, make this video to show you guys how I changed the oil in this machine and to keep up with the maintenance on it. So without further ado, let's hop in this video. All right, items you need for the oil change. Of course, you need an oil filter. I have the Kawasaki branded filter. I am using two quarts of Amsoil 10W40 engine oil. This is a commercial grade full synthetic. I use Maxwell House little containers right here. I just cut the lip off of them, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. This is to catch the oil that drains out. You need an oil filter wrench. I use the cup style with the 3 8 inch right there. You need a quarter inch ratchet with an extension, 10 millimeter socket, and a 3 8 inch drive ratchet with a little bit of an extension there as well. All right, so first step, right in the front edge of this bracket right here, this square piece, is where the tube comes down for the oil drain. So this is why I take the little Maxwell House coffee container and cut the top of it off because you can slide it right underneath there and then you'll be able to drain the oil right into that, right underneath the back of the machine. So while that's draining, we'll go ahead and remove the oil filter. So I just take a red shop rag or any shop bag that you have and lay it underneath here just to catch any excess oil that comes off and then I also put just a little container like this right underneath there to catch the bulk majority of the oil that comes out from taking the filter off. So we'll go ahead and remove the filter. I have my cup wrench here with the 3H socket and the extension. Go ahead and pop that on there. And go ahead and break it loose. That will be a little tight because of the rubber gasket in there. But you only want them to be on there hand tight and then they'll tighten up as they go. So there you can see the oil start coming out. I just remove the socket and go ahead and twist it all the way off. There you have the old filter and the excess oil is draining into the container. So once the oil has stopped dripping off of here, you can go ahead and remove this little container. What's nice is that when you go to put your new filter on, you have some excess oil there that you can put on the ring to help make sure that you get a good seal on your new filter. Next step, go ahead and take your 10 millimeter socket and go ahead and tighten up <coughs> this valve. Now the big part about these valves is you don't want to over tighten them. Like I mentioned before, there is a seal in here. If you over tighten that seal, it's a pain to try and fix it. So all you want to do is go ahead and tighten it until it gets to that tight point right here and then this is all you want to do. You don't even want to put any real tension on it but just enough to close it and it will be sealed from there. I am using that number right there for mine. I know this engine has two different options that you can use. One is a little bit shorter and one is a little bit longer so I prefer the shorter one compared to the longer um, just by the way the seal is on it. So you can go ahead and contact your local dealer or your distributor to make sure that you get the correct oil filter for your engine. All right, next up, you wanna take that little cup of oil that you have. Go 
and go ahead and dip your finger in there and get some of the excess oil and run it right across the seal here. This helps to make sure that the seal does not bunch up and you don't get leaks later on with the new oil in it. So it's just a lubricant to make sure that it does fit okay onto the seal right here. Now some people prefer to pre-fill their oil filters before they put them onto the machine. Me personally, I've never done that. I have never had an issue with it. So I don't do that, but if you feel more comfortable doing that, you can go ahead and pre-fill your oil filter before you put on the new filter. Next step, go ahead and put your filter on. And twist it on until it reaches the metal plate. And then a lot of mistakes that people make is they try to tighten these down with the oil filter wrench. You do not need it to be that tight. You only need it to be hand tight. So just go ahead and turn until you get to that tight point. And then what I do is I give it one little good turn, just like that. And that's all you need to do. Now for me personally, I like to put the hours onto my oil filter to make sure that I do know when the next change will happen. So right now my mower has 303.2 hours and the AMS oil that I'm putting into the engine goes for 60 hours approximately. So I'm gonna put 363.2 onto the filter. That way with the hours marked on it, I will know exactly when the next oil change needs to happen on this machine. Next step, go ahead and remove the filler cap. And I put in funnel just like that. I'll go ahead and grab my oil. Again, I'm using the AMS oil, small engine oil, 10W40. It is a full synthetic. And so we'll go ahead and add that into the machine. One other thing I've always done is I've always downloaded all the manuals to all my equipment into my phone. So as you guys can see here, FX1000 VEFI, 1.7 liters or 1.8 US quarts when oil filter is not removed, and 1.9 liters or 2.0 US quarts when oil filter is removed. That way I can easily access this information while I'm out working in the shop. Next, I've gone ahead and removed the filler cap and I'm going to check and make sure that I do have the proper amount of oil into the machine. So all you wanna do is put this down in, don't twist it on, but just until it touches, then pull that out. As you guys can see there, we are right at the full line. So this engine is good to go. So we'll go ahead and put that on, twist it tight, and you're all set to go. One final step that I do is I do go ahead and start up the machine and run it. And then after running the machine for a little while, I check around the oil filter and around the plate and everything like that. Also around the filler neck and then the tube that is down in the bottom where the oil drain was to make sure that there is no excess oil and that there is no leaks in the machine. To make sure that the gasket seated correctly and that everything is good to go so that way you don't have any problems down the road. Also, as you guys can see here, this is why I use these little coffee containers. It fits the two quarts exactly. You can see where the fill line is right there. It fits exactly in there so that way you don't have to worry about it and you can remove it and put it to a different container later on. 
There you go guys, there is my oil change on the Kawasaki FX1000D EFI. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and click that little bell for notifications to let you know when I post another video. As always guys, take care, God bless, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.